students, we're here to tell you about the sulfur cycle. Hi! Sulfur is an element on the periodic table. It cycles throughout the biosphere and has a great impact on our overall environment. Yellow! In sulfur's natural state, it's yellow. Sulfur's yellow! 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 Sulfur, known as brimstone to the Chinese, is also affected by gravity. Wow, really? factors to sulfur in the environment. One of these is volcanic eruptions. Every time a volcano erupts, various minerals are spewed out with its fumes. Sulfur, being one of the minerals, is thrown up into the air where it collects in the atmosphere and sometimes comes back down to earth in the form of acid precipitation, either rain, snow, or sleet. Combustion causes sulfates to be released into the atmosphere. This is usually caused by fossil fuels being burned in factories or by our automobiles. It can also be caused by fire and fireworks. We're here at the bottom of the ocean because sulfur deposits here after acid precipitation. The sulfur comes down to the bottom and builds up as sediment, where it is then put into the soil by microorganisms. Here, the some of the sulfur is spread to plants, where they absorb it through their root systems. The plant's root system. The sulfur that isn't absorbed by plants' root systems then goes back down into the earth, where it's compacted as fossil fuels or sent up through volcanic eruptions. Either way, it's still put back into the sulfur cycle. Root system. You must be wondering why we're here in the woods right now. I'll tell you why. We're here to explore what role plants play on the sulfur cycle. Let's go find ourselves a plant. It all starts here, where sulfur, already in the soil, is taken out of the soil by the plant's root system. The plant's root system. up into the rest of the tree, where it stays in the, until it dies. But Anthony, how does the sulfur get out of the plants? Yeah, that's a very good question. Let's go find out. This is where it's happening. Right here, this fungus, with the help of bacteria, are decomposing this tree as we speak. Once the plant's finished decomposing, all the nutrients and minerals once inside of it are returned back into the soil. That includes the sulfur that was taken out by the plant's root system.
It all starts when animals eat plants that already contain sulfur absorbed through their roots. Root system. Mmm. Got sulfur? So once the sulfur is in an animal's system, how does it get out? Well, this happens in a few ways. One way is when the animal defecates, some sulfur is expelled through the feces. feces. The other way that sulfur leaves the systems as animals is after they die and start to decompose, much like plants, the sulfur returns back to the soil from whence it came. So pretty much, the animals involved in the sulfur cycle have a similar role as the plants. Root system. And thus, they play a pretty important part and have a pretty great impact on the sulfur cycle overall. This following public service announcement involves a serious environmental issue. Acid rain. And is brought to you by John Hallinger. So you're driving home in your new H3. You get home, you open the door, the garage door, a few times. Get inside, you turn on all the lights. Bathroom, kitchen, bedroom, basement, attic all the lights. So after that you open the refrigerator, leave that open, turn on the oven, do a few loads of laundry, turn on the hair dryer, flush the toilet a few times, use all the outlets. The list goes on. You, you, you turn on your heat, turn on your AC, all the, all the necessary things for comfortable living. You, you might as well micro microwave yourself a, a burrito at that point. This is all fun and games, right? Wrong. Using a lot more electricity than necessary. You might want to think where this electricity comes from. Electricity comes from factories. These factories burn fossil fuels. In the combustion of these fossil fuels, many harmful pollutants are spewed into the atmosphere. One of them is sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide contributes heavily to acid precipitation. Don't use unnecessary electricity. Don't drive a Hummer. I'm melting! I'm melting! No, but seriously, acid rain contributes heavily to the destruction of ecosystems. Especially aquatic ecosystems. You see this? This fish was the victim of extremely low pH in his water. Acid rain causes the pH to lower to levels so terribly harmful that so many organisms are affected and they can't live in the water like that. Especially ponds, lakes, and streams because their water content is so much lower than that of the ocean. <laughs> Although acid rain is a big problem, there are some measures that can be taken to lessen its effects. For example, coal burning power plants can use flue gas desulfurization or FGD to remove sulfur from the gases released into the air. Also, the overall reduction in the use of fossil fuels will reduce the level of sulfur in the air and thus the level of acid rain falling to the earth. Chomps, 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 falls down to earth through acid precipitation. It goes down to the bottom of the ocean, which takes thousands and thousands of years, and collects as sediment. This sediment, which is also spread to the soil through microorganisms, is taken up by plants through their root systems. Root system. Plants, and also in turn animals, obtain the sulfur and spread it back into the earth through defecation 
or decomposure. This occurs very quickly compared to the sediment because animals and plants have fairly short lifespans.